Hello everyone, it's our pleasure to talk about what we learned from the reduction of potential latencies in pre analytic kernels. In this talk, we revealed the development of this kernel test isolation through the years, and then the latest test isolation implementation with the minimal changes as discussed. It. The preliminary results show that it is capable of eliminating the unintended latency for pre kernels. In addition, we would like to address the potential kernel integration considerations. <coughs> the no HD mode in Linux allows partial task isolation, decreasing the number of interrupts that the CPU receives. For example, the clock tick interrupt is disabled for nearly all CPUs. However, no HD does not guarantee there will be no interrupts. The running task can still be interrupted by patch faults or delayed work queues. Full task isolation is arguably an attempt to finish the job by removing all interrupts. A process that enters the isolation mode will be able to run in user space without interference from the kernel or other processes. With the help of PRCTL system code, a task can activate isolation. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we want to identify the source of noise, which is crucial to print RT kernels. Here, task isolation means the escape from the noise by introducing several isolation mechanisms. In this talk, we will go through the problem of current task isolation uh, the thing of the feasibility to achieve for test isolation. We also revisit the evolution of full test isolation. We, we will show some uh, patch sets proposed by several developers. However, we will not discuss jailhouse or other hypervisor based solutions. We will not either discuss uh, yet another uh, RT patch sets. What we want to do is to consolidate print RT patch sets. <coughs> GPU interference is defined as any case where kernel management function will take CPU time from a pure CPU bound user task, making no system call, and running pins to an isolated CPU with no other contending user task. Precise speaking, any kernel activity that occurs as a result of the specific task activity is not considered interference. However, kernel activity on the specific CPU happening as a result of work or other task of the general kernel infrastructure not a related a special task are considered interference. For example, IO is an important <coughs> source of noises. For example, uh, in DPDK, uh, <coughs> we, we must uh, be aware of the, the blocking uh, to receive data from the socket. <coughs> and uh, inside the Linux kernel, there are some uh, housekeeping mechanisms. Um, <clears throat> take unbounded 
works for example uh, they are RCUO and timer and the tag bounding works for example they are uh, RCUC uh, BS state updates uh, routine <coughs> before we do into the the detail of vortex isolation uh, we will we would like to uh, address its definition it should be able to provide a biomental like environment for computationally intensive or real-time application to run on. <coughs> um, let's go back to uh, the implementation uh, of current, current infrastructure for test isolation. 20 years ago, Schedule set affinity system code was introduced to specify a set of CPU on uh, which a thread uh, could, could run it. And uh, in 2004, isolated CPU was introduced to allow CPU to be removed from scheduling domain and uh, low bandwidth, <coughs> which improves the real-time behavior <clears throat> and in 2012 RCU callback offloading was introduced <clears throat> the next year no SG rule was introduced its motivation is to reduce the tick to one HG <clears throat> and in 2018, no HG four was improved. <clears throat> Let's go through each kernel feature associated with test isolation. The first thing is uh, this schedule set affinity system code. Uh, it is the first mechanism for isolating task in this kernel. It controls each CPU affinity mask of the task to indi indicate which CPU uh, it, it, it can run on. And it needs to handle each mask to achieve test isolation. <coughs> and the next mechanism to achieve test isolation is uh, ISO isolated CPU. It removes the specified CPU from scheduling domain and it isolates process from a selected CPU by default, which means that processes will not migrate to the isolated CPU during low bandwidth. It's a crucial feature uh, for print RT to be more practical. <coughs> then the third mechanism is no HD4. It's uh, the most important feature uh, for test isolation. It could reduce the time tick when the system does not need to do scheduling. However, uh, the time tick might not be easily disabled. In fact, there are some uh, dependencies, uh, such as uh, parties timer, perf event, uh, clock source scheduler, and RCU callback. For scheduler uh, itself needs to perform preemption, which means uh, the timer tick could not be disabled. Uh, at that time, and uh, for RCU callback, <coughs> we have to think about the further further issues. RCU NOCB or RCU no callback is an RCU feature that offloads RCU callbacks lifecycle handling and execution out of the inquisitors. CPU soft IRQ to specif 
kernel thread instead. This pulls some kernel noise out of CPU that may run crucial code. This usually is associated with the no HD4. Uh, so far, we can uh, make a list of the problem we face in kernel uh, in kernel infrastructure uh, from the perspective of full task isolation. It's suitable for isolating from unbounded work by setting affinity mask or passing isolated CPU and no HD4 as kernel parameters. However, it is not possible to prevent bounded works from in interrupting test isolating CPUs. Uh, for example, <coughs> VN state update worker will be queued to per CPU run queue and SQ every second by default. So it means the Unintended latency uh, it still exists for pre ended RT kernels. <clears throat> so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are already some uh, developer who send uh, test isolation improvement patches. In 2015, Chris proposed an interesting test isolation patch. There are some um, notable features. It first it provides configuration uh, through this PRCTL system call, and he evaluates the possibility to disable tick at the beginning of task isolation. <clears throat> and uh, in the Chris patch sets, the VN state up update worker was cancelled. <clears throat> so if you go back to no HD, uh, no HD is not able to eliminate time attack from occurring forcing the system to put the notice on the potential timer interrupt. <coughs> uh, and for the <coughs> LRU add gen, uh, it ensures that the CPU will not be asked to free up CPU local pages while it is running in user space. However, <coughs> inside Chris patches set, uh, the kernel may be the wet until there is no more pending timer to run. Later, in 2019, Alex proposed another patch based on Chris uh, implementation He adds the isolation feature, which caused uh, several changes in, uh, in various kernel subsystems. <clears throat> and uh, in S patch sets, it prevents IPI, which stands for interprocessor interrupt, from sending to isolated cores. And he adds the cool to ensure to to enable isolation at system call IRQ and IPI entries. However, there are some notable problems uh, in LS patch set. <clears throat> First, it broke some semantics of kernel API. Uh, for example, um, the kick or CPU sync will not synchronize on isolated CPU. So uh, it means the behavior changes in 
for test isolation mode. Uh, also, <coughs> uh, since kick all sync, kick all CPU sync uh, has been modified to avoid scheduling interrupt on CPU with isolated task. It implies that uh, it may come with several risk condition when changing isolation mask. And uh, in S patch, the modification, the, the amount of modification was huge. Uh, the modification across several paths, including system call, IRQ, IRQ chip, and so on. And the most importantly, as patch set was dedicated to ARM 64 architecture only, which means that other developers have difficulty to reproduce uh, LS, uh, LS full task isolation work. Recently, Marcelo, uh, who is the maintainer of this KVN, uh, tried to improve KVN performance by reworking LS patch sets. <coughs> uh, his motivation was to improve KVN, uh, KVN's performance, and uh, uh, Marcelo reworked. <coughs> What Alice did uh, before uh, by providing fine grained configuration, and uh, Marcelo believes to have uh, the flexibility to decide which inter in in interrupts are acceptable, acceptable to the system, and uh, only VN state update worker uh, is cancelled, <coughs> which means. It brings less impact to kernel since the frequency of updates can be modified uh, through system call. And uh, the cost of updating via state is more expensive in KVN, so that's uh, the motivation of Marcellus patch states. However, uh, inside Marcellus patch set, the TF, which stands for Thread information flag must be updated if the isolated task is preempt uh, through a preempt notifier, uh, and uh, we have to enable KVN configuration in order to make use uh, Marcel's patch sets. <laughs> Here is the uh, General overview of, of the API usage based on Marcel's patch. Uh, you can configure, uh, com configure and specify the feature bits you want to use. However, at the moment, only VN state update worker is cancelled. <coughs> so you could only specify the, the flag. But it's uh, possible to is 10. And uh, we can activate a uh, specified feature after sets. Uh, it, uh, the usage is like this. So here, we use the PRCTO system code to specify the, the, the feature. And this part is, uh, is to activate test isolation <coughs> by means of PRCTO. Uh, OS latency uh, or OS, OS dates is uh, part of uh, part of RT test packages, <coughs> and uh, in Marcel's patch sets, uh, he use PRCTL uh, to mark the beginning and the end uh, section, which is uh, sensitive to latency. So uh, this is a uh, the, the code shown in this screen is the main loop or all state. So you can put your own uh, 
you will you will own routines here, <coughs> which are sensitive to the latency. Uh, here is uh, activate, and uh, this part is to deactivate test isolation. <coughs> In order to measure <coughs> the effectiveness and the benefits of of test isolation patch, we have to uh, measure uh, along with uh, the scenario. We will use three benchmarking tool. <coughs> the first one is always let, which is a part a part of RS RT test. It pull pulls it pulls the timer value, uh, which can simulate some uh, usage. For example, uh, the DPDK use case, which is a user space network driver, and we will use a uh, Function tracer of F trace, which records the behavior system system including executed function and events, and uh, we will use the uh, OS noise tracer, which was introduced in recent kernels. It has similar behavior to OS that, uh, but it can record more information such as. Uh, Actual execution time and the uh, type of noise. <clears throat> Besides benchmarking tool, we must prepare uh, the proper workload. Here we use uh, two tools. One is the first one is a uh, TMD, uh, which is developed by Red Hat. Uh, is very useful uh, in several scenario. And it have us to configure and reproduce in much straightforward way. And uh, we will use a uh, stress ng, which generate various kinds of workload such as uh, virtual memory um, <coughs> and uh, time interrupts. The benchmarking scenario we we propose. Uh, this thing as follows. The best idea is to test the behavior and the effectiveness of test isolation patches. We will focus on the scenario that have the intensive uh, accesses to memories, which forces VN state update to synchronize the data amount codes frequently. Based on the based on the idea, we this Find three ki kinds of workload. The first is a frequent patch faults. The third, the second is frequent out of memory keys, and the third one is the mixture of the above workload, uh, which means patch faults and out of memory keys. Take place frequently in the such uh, in such workload, <coughs> and we choose two two platforms uh, to validate test isolation patches. Uh, the first is a uh, Raspberry Pi fourth generation, which consists of ARM sixty four architecture. Another is the uh, Intel Xeon uh, class machine running KVM, and uh, for the bo both platform, uh, the kernel is the kernels were configured with uh, skill task uh, set to one in kernel parameter, and we use the uh, TMD uh, to generate the workload with uh. Precise speaking, we uh, we set real time virtual host profile to isolate a single core. Here the here are the the step to benchmark. Uh, initially we choose the the treasure and the events we want to record, 
And then we perform the voning ops by starting the workload on non-isolated core and waiting for a while. <clears throat> Eventually, we could run the tracer uh, and record the possible noises uh, associated with uh, the events. Uh, you can use uh, the, <clears throat> the script uh, we prepared to reproduce. Okay, so the kernel we use is based on a uh, Linux uh, on version 5.15, uh, along with the uh, PrintRT patch sets <coughs> and the Marcellus uh, test isolation patch. Most of the results were measured by OSLET, uh, which is a part of RT, te uh, RT test package to catch all possible interference. We test on two kinds of platform. Uh, one is uh, Raspberry Pi, another is uh, uh, Intel Xeon uh, servers. <coughs> we run uh, three three kinds of different workload by gener uh, generated by stress ng. Uh, so the first is a patch fault, including major and minor patch faults. The third, uh, the, the second is a virtual memory and uh, uh, a map with a uh, out of memory killer. The third one is a mixture of patch fault, virtual memory and uh, a map. Okay, so check this this part. So uh, this part is uh, is major on Raspberry Pi, uh, which consists of uh, on sixty four mi microarchitecture, and uh, the blue line is a uh, Queen RT kernel uh, with no HD four, <clears throat> and the the orange one is. Uh, it is the configuration with test isolation. <clears throat> so here, if you check the patch faults, the text isolation behave a bit better. And uh, if you check the virtual memory uh, workload, uh, is still better. And if you if you mixture uh, the workload of patch faults and and uh, virtual memory <coughs> with uh, out of memory killer. Uh, you can see from the diagram uh, the task isolation behave better. Uh, so all test cases have lower latency in average. In Raspberry Pi, uh, since the system is clean and uh, it does not run other app application, the test isolation feature brings an improvement about two microseconds to latency at least. And in certain uh, workload, it could be much better. And if you check the Intel Xeon uh, service, it brings 10 microsecond latency reduction. And uh, it shows that the isolation from real state update is still useful uh, from the perspective of, of, of KVN. However, the maximum latency is still high. Uh, if you check the ARM 64 bits architecture, uh, you can see the 200 uh, microsecond <coughs> in maximum latency, uh, which means there are still some uh, other interference that should be isolated. According to the results, uh, we can conclude that there is no silver bullet, which means <clears throat> uh, we could not rely on single uh, test isolation patch set to eliminate uh, to eliminate all latency. Uh, in other words, there is no general solution existing uh, for for test isolation. We have to identify the source <clears throat> of noise and uh, figure out the corresponding solutions uh, one, one by one. 
uh, and uh, based on the latest uh, patch set uh, proposed by Marcelo, uh, v version 15, extra errors are needed for full text isolations. Again, we have to take the source of noise seriously. Uh, from the latest test isolation patch, patch set proposed by Marcelo, we are able to cancel VN state updates events, but we still have to uh, think of uh, interrupt hand, hand, handlers uh, such as uh, IR, IRQ, sub IRQ, uh, and uh, scheduling tick is an important source which causes the noise. So we have to think about uh, the usage and the real scenario. However, uh, the results of latest test isolation patch shows it is uh, quite feasible to extend. So at the moment, we could only cancel the state update, but it's possible to add some uh, some feature such as uh, disable IPI for uh, on sixty four platforms. So I would like to uh, emphasize uh, the the importance <coughs> of test isolation patch, but. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, there is a uh, room for improvements. <clears throat> okay, thanks for your listening.